In this talk, I want to present our recent work on a deep learning method for solving focal Planck equations. We are interested in the dynamic system driven by the stochastic differential equation. It is well known that the distribution of the solution process will satisfy the so-called focal Planck equation, also known as the Kolmogorov forward equation. In this work, we are interested in the invariant measure of the STE. So that means we want to solve the stationary states of the PDE where the partial derivative with respect to time t is constantly equal to zero. Namely, we want to solve the PDE LU is equal to zero. <clears throat> the uniqueness is determined by this integral constraint. The difficulty for solving this problem using traditional numerical method is it lacks the boundary condition. But we can do it this way. By the Franklin Winsell large division principle, the probability for a particle to transit to any point that is far away will be very small. So we can assume zero boundary condition on a very large domain where this um, large domain covers all the high density parts of this distribution. Okay, but this is very expensive numerically because in application, most dynamic systems are high dimensional. So we need to, in a high dimensional space, choose a very large domain and then refine it to guarantee the convergence of the method. There is another approach of this method, Monte Carlo simulation. We can just run several trajectories of this SDE for a very long time. And then we just count the numbers of points on these trajectories in the neighborhoods of the collocation points where we want to solve the PDE, the density function. So this method has great flexibility. We can solve it at any point, but the disadvantage is the result will be very noisy. We can see this from the following example. For this SDE, the invariant measure is this ring-like density function. So if we use the Monte Carlo approximation, we will get these results. So globally, it is a good approximation as a distribution function, but uh, in any local area, the approximation is not accurate. This is a contradiction because we want to use this method to find out local densities, but it is not accurate locally. But we can still use this Monte Carlo simulation results as data in the deep learning method. So we provide the following deep learning methods. We consider the constraint optimization problem. The solution will satisfy the PDE as the constraint. And then we minimize the difference between the solution function and the data. This data V can be Monte Carlo approximation or any data from practical experiments. So basically we project the noisy data V onto the smooth kernels manifold of the, P, of the differential operator L. But we do not, of course, we do not use this constraint problem in the deep learning method, but we apply a penalty method to make it an unconstrained problem and consider the following loss functional. It has two parts, one part from the PDE, one part from the data. This is similar to the loss function used in physics informed neural network method, but we do not use boundary condition and the initial condition here, but use data as the reference for uh, the solution to be a 
density distribution, distribution density function. So we just need to set up the solution U to be an artificial neural network with parameters theta and learn the parameters from the Monte Carlo integration of the loss function. Okay. So in this work, we provide some rough analysis of the method. Instead of consider the continuous version of the PDE, we discretize it into a linear equations. So AU is equal to zero using finite difference method. So the matrix A should set should be of the following form. We denote the error from the Monte Carlo by E and the error of the method by Z. And under some assumptions, we can prove the limit of this quotient is equal to zero. So if we assume the error from Monte Carlo is spatially IID random variable, then we can guarantee that the variance is a constant. So the limit, the convergence of the method is proved. So one advantage of the pin-like neural network method is we actually do not need to use a lot of data. In fact, the neural network will learn the physics law from the PDE parts and then just use the data as the reference to determine the uniqueness. So in this sense, we do not need to use a lot of data and we test this in the following example. We still use the ring density example. Okay, if we do not give the, we do not put the lo, uh, PDE parts in the loss function, we need to use, for example, 1,000, uh, sorry, 16,000 data points to get an approximation with an error about 0, 0 0.02. But if we add this PDE part to the loss function, we just need to use a few hundreds of data points to get an even better approximation. But because we only need, or we only use a few hundreds uh, reference data points, we need to choose them very carefully. The reason is, for example, in this mixed mode oscillation system, we know the invariant measure uh, of course, the marginal invariant measure in the first two dimensions will be concentrated on two regions. And these two regions are very small regions. But if we sample this data or collocation points for the PDE parts uniformly in this region, it is highly possible that all of them are located in the low density parts. That means the density value will be very small. Remember, zero is a solution of the focal Planck equation. So in the learning process, the neural network will think these small errors, the small values as just noises, and then just learn a zero result from the method. That's not what we want. So, we want more reference points or collocation points to be located in the high density parts. Actually, this is similar to the adaptivity in traditional numerical methods. But if we choose them all from high density part, it will lack the information from the low density parts. For example, if we consider this ring density uh, example, if we choose all data and collocation points from outside the unit circle, we may get this kind of result because the neural network doesn't know what happens in the unit circle. 
this is also what we do not want. So we also need some points from low density parts, or actually in all the in all the regions. Okay. So we provide the following strategy to sample data. Okay. So we just need to run a trajectory of this SDE and then choose some collocation points or and data from this trajectory. And then it is highly possible that these points are from high density parts. And then we use uniform distribution to sample the rest of them. And then they are distributed almost everywhere in this region. And they will be representative. And this rate alpha is usually said to be between 50 and 90 because we want more points from the high density regions. The other advantage of the pin like method is denoising. To test the strengths of denoising, we use the following example. For this gradient system, we of course know the invariant measure is the Gibbs measure and the density function is known like this. Okay, and we artificially add noise to the exact solution by multiplying a random variable R to the exact solution at these collocation points. And these random variables are follow the uniform distribution between one minus alpha and one plus alpha, where this alpha controls the strength of the noise. And then we raise this alpha from 0 0.01 up to 0.5. That means finally the, the, the noise can be as strong as one half of the true value. So we can see the noise is artificially added to the uh, exact solution. And after we apply the method, we can still get very good approximation, no matter how strong the noise is. And the error in both error two norm and error infinite norm are controlled within 0 0.03. We also test our method on high dimensional problems. We consider this dynamic system whose invariant measure is also known. It's worth noting that in this high dimensional problem, the restriction of the density function in the first two dimensions will be always the same, okay? So this provides us an opportunity to compare the method on different dimensions. So we test it on two dimensionalities, 10 and 20. We can see that if we use the same structure of the neural network, it is it works better on a lower dimensional case. But to improve it, we can just add more neurons in the hidden layers of the neural network. And of course, the result is improved. Thank you. This is all for this lecture.